What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be going over Diablo 4 Server Slam weekend and kind of just my overall feedback. Um, we did a really good like back and forth in my community live on my stream here on YouTube, but I wanted to kind of go over just kind of like some really good points and thoughts and stuff that kind of happened during my experience and as well as theirs. This doesn't go into a, a big depth but it does kind of address some of the major things that we experienced in comparison to the last server slam. And then we're going to, we're going to round it up with our overall thoughts. So let's get into it. So let's talk about the good guys. Um, some of the good stuff that really happened in Diablo four server slam was no QEs. We had no queues inside of, uh, the server slam this past weekend. It was absolutely fantastic. I mean, I, I was working, so I had to get on two and a half hours later, but everybody in my discord and everybody that I saw on Twitter and all this stuff, they, they were talking about how there was no cues. They got in instantly, you know, and it was just fantastic. So when I got on two and a half hours later, it was just really, really good. I mean, I got right in, I created my character and just got and just started blasting. Right. Um, on top of that, we just had no DCing. I only did once is when, you know, we created our clan because we're going to have a clan for Diablo 4. And I was like, you know, spam accepting um, requests for invites. That's the only time that I DC. So uh, the overall like server seemed a lot more stable. And it was just it was just so good to be able to come home and not have to wait an hour, two hours, three hours to get into server slam. So big dub there. Next, uh, gameplay felt very, very smooth. It felt so much better. There was, you know, no stutters, very little lag in some situations. I didn't experience, I mean, there is still some bugs, guys, but there wasn't a whole lot of bugs that I experienced as far as like getting stuck in a wall or, hey, I couldn't, I couldn't go up to this, you know, this rock and open this thing. I was just kind of like lagging on a hill or something like that. So there was very little instances of that. There was still some, there's that one road to the right of, the main city where you still could not walk through. I was just stuck walking through there. So that kind of sucked, but still the overall gameplay felt very, very smooth. So with it being as close to what the full game is going to be on release, it felt good to me. Next, the leveling process and the progression felt very, very good. Uh, even though it was only to level 20, uh, everything felt very, very strong and just like, hey, it didn't take us. It took us roughly two hours to get to 20 guys. I don't know about you. We were doing group play, so maybe that caused a little bit of delay because we were, all, we were on world tier two. So it took us about two hours to get our druid to level 20. So the leveling process, even though we didn't get the boost that we did from the previous um, open beta, it still felt very, very fine. Like it didn't take very long to kind of level up. Um, in the progression, although I think it felt a lot better in solos, the next characters that we did um, the rogue and the sorcerer we did those solo instead of group play just to kind of test it and it still it felt a little bit better in solo because you were just kind of moving and the monsters didn't have the added buff of being in a party um, especially since we were limited to 20. now once the full game releases i think the best way is just to group up and just blast through everything because it's going to be awesome but uh the leveling process felt good and overall progression just felt very balanced it was it was awesome next one of the best things that happened this beta was the item drop rate Okay, there was plenty of blues and yellows, guys. There was, it felt even better once you got a legendary, right? The Lego drop rate felt very, very good. You roughly are getting one like every two hours or so, maybe in every hour and a half. So it felt very, very balanced. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but from the last beta, we were going into dungeons and your inventory was absolutely full. And then you had to dump your inventory or swap out items. And then people were doing the, well, I can just pick all these yellows and blues ups. Don't pick up the Legos because we're just gonna get automatically sent to my inventory, um, you know, back in town or my stash. And it's just, it was like every two or three dungeons roughly that you were going through at least every two dungeons to where like that's when my inventory filled up. So that felt very good. Um, but the item drop rate felt awesome, especially in the early game. It just, you were like, yes, I got a new yellow. I got a new blue that was really strong. And then once you got a Lego, it was just like, oh, now I'm just the most OP character in Diablo 4. So item drop rate being as close to the full game, very, very good. Um, <laughs> five guys, the Shava was no joke. I hope everybody fought her at 20 and was able to get um, the Shava horn for your mounts. But she was very, very tough. This was a good thing. I, I really want world bosses to be difficult. They shouldn't be so easy. Now in the main game, you know, once you're once you're a super high level, depending on what the world bosses are going to be, what levels are going to be at, you know, 
it, it will make the fight a little easier. Or I noticed through the beta, a lot of people were um, ticking it down from world tier two difficulty back to world tier one just to make the fight a little bit easier and kudos to you i want you guys to get those rewards but on world tier two a shovel is no joke now later we fought her we fought her three times because of work i could only fight her three times which sucked but uh the very last time that we fought her and we had all of our gear kind of boosted up leveled up three times and then just we had like two legendary powers that just they weren't op but they were just kind of extra buffs like for the shield and whatnot it still made the Ashava fight really, really satisfying to play. So the uh, the level 20 to fight her was actually really good. So maybe maybe they'll have some really good balancing in the main game. Uh, next, this is a personal one that kind of added when I was talking to my community about it, is that the sellers were okay. I only did one. <laughs> I only did one, and I got a, um, what is it, a, a shadow chest or a curse chest. Um, and it made the experience down in the cellar really fun. Now, I know that, you know, the, the dev said that maybe they changed them and they're and they're trying to come up with ways to make it worth doing. I think that having the events in there is really good. Even if you, um, you know, 60% of the time, maybe it's 50-50 every time you do one. Um, and then the chest would be really good just to get the items. Don't give us obols, but at least just give us, you know, three or four items to make it worth it uh, to do them. Otherwise, there's no reason to go into these. But the one experience I had was actually pretty cool. The last thing and probably the most important that I know everybody looks forward to in these kind of videos is class balancing. Before the server slam, we got a big uh, class balancing patch notes that we got. And then right before the servers went live, they changed some things again and uh, a big, big nerf to the Necros. Now, well, before we before we like you guys torch me in the comment section, uh, Necros did get a buff. The minions did get a buff, but I want to talk about pre pre buff before we get into that okay so class balancing overall there was good and bad things okay the druid buffs you know they were good they were fine but they still felt very very weak i mean the companions it was only good once you activated like actively had them doing something when they're just passively doing stuff it just it just didn't really feel as strong the ultimates uh the cooldowns we didn't even get a chance to use our ultimates so we didn't really get a chance to experience that uh so even though the druid had some buffs, he still felt very, very weak until we hit 20 and we were able to customize classes. So uh, the early experience for some of these classes were really bad. Um, the nerf to the shouts was good, but it still felt very strong. A lot of the community members that played Barbarian, even with the nerfs to the shouts, they still felt very good and very powerful for the Barbarian. The Barbarian is going to be an awesome class later um, in the game, especially in the late game. Now, nerfs to the Necro, okay? The nerfs to the Necro and the minions was very bad. Blizzard. I honestly don't know what the issue was from the previous beta and why you guys thought that the nerfs to the minions needed to be there. Um, I understand like maybe making useful of your resurrections to be able to do them all the time, but I'm going to quote Rax here. Shout out to Rax, but you are babysitting your minions. They die so much, there's just no way. Now let's go to post buff that they did Saturday during um, the server slam. They felt better but still not in the best spot. I, I just really wish they would just get rid of everything that they've done and turn them back to the way they were in the open beta from last month. Um, otherwise, the nerfs to Corpse Explosion and Blood Mist are fine. Um, so then Necro felt really good, but of course, Corpse, um, excuse me, Bone Spear was just probably the best skill that the that Necros had. Uh, Rogue felt great. The nerfs to Rogue still felt very, very strong. The Imbuements being having a longer cooldown still felt fine being with you know as much speed and movement that the rogue has and how many different skills that you're using the cooldowns felt fine so rogue in a really good place sorcerer however felt very very good we're going to talk about one bad thing with the sorcerer but sorcerer felt great the nurse to chain lightning still very strong still felt very very strong um so sorcerer good nerfs there felt good all around um let's get into some bad things guys now, again, this isn't in super in-depth. These are just kind of like big main plot points, but uh, the bad. So Core Dragon Body Farming needs a nerf, okay? Uh, we we started doing this as a way to get legendaries. It was really, really easy. You go into Core, Core Dragon, you cannot complete the Stronghold. If you do, you're not able to do this, right? Because the Stronghold turns into a village, you get a portal or whatever. So... If you didn't defeat it, you go into Core Dragon, you flip the route I was doing. I was flipping 11 bodies and I was able to get one chest that I would open. And in the two and a half hours that we farmed that, I got 28 legendaries, 28 legendaries. 
Um, now, about half of those were level 21 or 22, and I couldn't use them, but the other half I could use, which was really, really great. So if you flash this to the full release of the game, this is gonna be a very, very fast way to you know, farm legendaries, especially since they didn't give us the reset button, which is another big thing that we're gonna talk about, is that give us the reset bunch back for the dungeons. We tried this and it just felt like the timings was always off. We timed it to where like we would sit there and just wait, okay, now it's time for the dungeon to be reset and go back in and it's not reset. So I don't know if there needs to be like a timer on them or there needs to be uh, something else to kind of like, hey, you're good to go back in. Otherwise, just give us the resetting back. I can understand the same thing here with our core dragon guys is that you should never have to flip bodies for items or open chests for items. You should always be killing monsters, right? The whole point of a hack and slash ARPG is to be killing things. Now, in, you know, elite chests or quest chests, sure, make the chests have good loot, but flipping bodies should not be giving me the legendaries if I go fight, you know, 50 elites and I get one and I flip 11 bodies 20 times and then I get, you know, 28 legendaries. It's just, that needs to be nerfed. Uh, but just give us our reset dungeons back. Just give it to us. I understand that farming dungeons is going to be an issue, but they need to do something or otherwise make the timing and really fix that. So I hope they do. Uh, one other one, big one is that the time of recording, guys, this isn't 17 anymore. We are at 16 days uh, until release. That's probably the biggest bad. <laughs> uh, we're all feeling the withdrawals. Um, so moving on, level 20, guys, it felt crippling. It felt crippling compared to 25. Um, maybe in the future reverse this. So if they know, I know that they didn't announce that they were doing another one. It was kind of a big surprise and then they put it at 20. But I think if something like this was going to happen in the future, maybe with PTR testing for, you know, seasons or something, some kind of pre-event or something like that, just flip these, give us 20 first and then give us 25 last. So that way we can feel the progression even within five levels. Um, this is a big one for me. Please, for the love of God, Blizzard, let me teleport to my teammates like I can in Diablo 3. Please. The fact that I have to teleport back to town and then teleport to my teammate, it's just such a waste of time. This needs to be a quality of life improvement to make your overall game better. I wonder if maybe Blizzard just has some issues with it being in a live server. I don't know if that's the case or not. You know, like it is, and wow, you're playing on a live server, so maybe there's limitations. I don't know. But this is something they need to fix immediately. Um, Blizzard. We had a big issue with this. We noticed that during the Ashava fights that there was some sorting of players. We grouped up a bunch and a lot of us got sorted out. And we also noticed we had lower level players, 15 and below. We had an 18 in there. We had a 17 in there. Some of my people in my Discord had level nines in the Ashava fight. I think in the full game, there has to be some kind of gatekeeping to prevent lower level players from griefing the Ashava fight just to advance, even if it's just to advance a world tier or just try to get the rewards, whether it's daily or weeklies. But this has to be gatekept by a level cap. So if Ashava is level 25, they need to make it to where you cannot even enter the fight unless you're level 20. Period. End of story. It shouldn't, you should not be able to come in here and grief or and or leech off of other players that are actually doing it for the rewards. So uh, this is probably the biggest thing that Blizzard needs to fix. Um, the next thing is I thought there was going to be a gem tab. I could have swore that they mentioned in the last um, open beta notes and stuff that they were going to give us a gem tab. Maybe that's just for full game, but we didn't have one for the beta. It would have been nice because I had a lot of gems I just had to carry, which took up slots in my inventory. Uh, now let's get into the bad necro nerfs we already talked about the minion necros at first but it got better uh the next one is barb upheaval the nerf felt too much uh, i know upheaval is very very strong and i still think it's going to be probably one of the main skills that you're going to use in the main game but at least in the beta it felt underwhelming in comparison to other things druid needs more buffs early game just for the experience to be better i know there's a lot of talk out there about the druids being very strong in the late game but i i really hope that in the early game, every class is just better and more fun to play. I know not everything can be equal, and there's going to be some power level discrepancies between classes, which is fine in the late game. But as far as leveling up, I shouldn't have to get to, like, let's say, level 35 for me to start having fun on Druid. Because that's going to negate a lot of players from playing Druid right off the bat. They're just going to switch. 
So there needs to be some kind of more buffs or something else that you can do. The Druid is very slow and I'm stuck playing him because of Demon who won a bet against me in our open beta. So I'm forced to play Druid on launch. So thank you, Demon. Uh, next, the nerf to Sork Hydra was very, very bad too. It's too much. It makes it makes Hydra basically unplayable, even with the the, the power to have an additional one. It's just not even a, a fight. You'd rather just use like Flame Wall or Fireball, something like that. And maybe they nerfed it this bad on purpose to make you use other skills because Hydra was so strong. Maybe it'll get a small buff back up to keep it a little more balanced. So hopefully the sword gets there. Otherwise, the sword felt very, very good. Um, and then my kind of overall final thoughts, guys. The overall beta was good. Um, if this is as close to the game on release, I'm very excited. However, I hope that class balancing becomes better for the early game, especially with Druid, because I have to play that. Thanks, Demon. Small quality of life fixes, like the teleporting to my teammates would be great. Um, I know the servers are going to be very, very strong as far as bugs and stuff like that. We'll probably have a few to report, but overall, it should be a lot better. And I'm fairly confident that on release, we'll be able to just hop right in and just play, uh, which would be great. No queues, hopefully. So... Um, and then the leveling pro uh, progress and then item drop rates were fantastic. The game felt very, very good, at least to level 20. Uh, so I'm very, very excited about it, guys. Let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think about the patch notes? Um, not patch notes, but my kind of feedback and just overall, there's probably some things I missed. Let me know down in the com comments. Let's start a conversation. Otherwise, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like. Uh, and then subscribe if you're new, guys. We are almost at 10,000 subs on the channel, and we want to get there before the full release of Diablo 4. So help me get there. Really, really appreciate it. And as always, stay gaming. See you guys in the next one. Peace.